The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, folks, looking good. Billy Ray, feeling good, Lewis, from the offices of Duke and Duke. 100 South Broad Street, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, zip code 19147, phone number 215-555-5555 for all your buys and sells. Folks, I posted the chart for the DAX in here. Still have an upward bias acting like it could go either way without any trouble. And if we take a look at the FTSE, you'll notice here we're doing the same thing. Now, whether Julian Assange's uh, extradition into the United States will mean anything, but the odds are the bookmakers are giving it 8 to 5 that he dies of a heart attack before he ever reaches U.S. soil. I don't know where they get those odds, but uh, it's pretty steep. Anyway, let's take a quick look at something here, folks. We've had a big thing happen last night again, and that is the Treasury notes made a higher high by one tick. Now, I don't, and believe me, folks, it's doing it with dropping interest rates. This is not good. Yeah, I don't care what they say. It's just not good. If you look at this, let me just get this Treasury note chart to let you take a look at it, because I, I thought it was last week when we made the high. Now, what we've done here is we went one tick higher, and we dropped an open interest on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And if you'll notice here, I might have miscalculated that by a penny because today we hit 127.21. The Treasury bonds did not make a new high, and they've already broken 20 pips off the high. So this is not good action, boys and girls. So let's just keep that in mind uh, for what it's worth. Anyway, two cents worth. Someone asked me a question. You know, I've been doing this for going on eight, going to be eight decades next year, seven decades already now since the 50s. But uh, if uh, the way I describe it is, I mean, I, I never got, I was never going to be able to be a rock star or a baseball player or anything like that. So this is as close as I can get, you know, to being a rock and roll singer. And I can't sing. So when I get in front of an audience, I've never had any trouble talking because I know I make a lot of mistakes and it just doesn't bother me. I just shake it off and move on to something else. So it makes it uh, pretty good. Uh, the one There is a, a possible 135 in the bonds, Marshall. You're absolutely correct. But anyway, let me show you what things that really make me excited. Last night I was watching, I want to show you the crude oil, folks. This is a real interesting pattern here because this is something that I'm going to be talking about very shortly in a little more extensive area. But you'll notice that area uh, where we were, we were at 53.21 and we came down to that 51.70 three or four times in a row in the treasury, in the, in the uh, crude oil. But let me show you what was happening in crude oil uh, last night, which was interesting. Here is the, uh, here was the forecast that I was looking at uh, in the, uh, using my artificial intelligence. It's based on a time vibration, nothing to do with price. It's based on a, the tuning fork principle. In other words, once a tuning fork stop, starts, it goes until the vibration ends, or if you grab the tuning fork, that'll stop it. So this is the same type of, a, of an idea, but it's all based on timing, nothing to do with price at all. So this is what I was looking at. As you can see here, early Friday, two o'clock, in the morning New York time, we completed a nice little Gartley pattern on this little two-minute chart right when the market was supposed to start down, and bada-bing, bada-boom, it said it was going to start down till 4.30 in the morning. Now, all we're going to do now is we're going to take a quick look at a couple things here just to get you an idea of what's happening. So here's what we're going to be looking at here. Just give me a second so that we can get it up. Here we are coming in almost at 4.30 in the morning. Let's get it up here. And I'm going to show you a few of these just to get you an idea of what I'm doing. So you see there right around 4.30 in the morning, that's where it's supposed to be coming in. And you'll never guess what happens, believe it or not. Hold on one second here. If I can get the old mouse to work correctly, I will get it up. And we'll get it here. And bada bing, bada boom. And you'll see that we hit it exactly 4.30 in the morning, folks. We're now trading at the high end of the day at 52.60. That's a move of $900 on a two-minute chart. 
And, uh, you know, that's just one of the things. Now, the other one that I was watching, very interesting here, look at this. This is the E-mini S&P. As we're looking at the E-mini S&P here, you'll notice that we had a high here around midnight in the futures at uh, 2902. And it said it should be heading down until, guess what, 6.30 in the morning. So all we're going to do now is just to follow it along. And you'll see at 6.30 in the morning, or at uh, 3.30 in the morning, it was trading at 28.91. So the next step that you want to do is to go to see what happened at 6.30 in the morning. So if you get ready to take a look at it at 6.30 in the morning, bada bing, bada boom, there it is, 6.30 in the morning. We are now trading at uh, 28.93 up into this area here. And if this is correct, we should top, uh, make some type of a top around 9.30 in the morning, and then it gets a, a little bit choppy. It doesn't work all the time, but when it does, it gives you some pretty good ideas of uh, things that are going to be happening in the market. Now, let me give you another example here in the gold market. This is real interesting because uh, we were getting ready, you know, to look like make a breakout once we went above 12.49 uh, in the gold. And you'll notice uh, this was saying there was going to be a really strong day. You can see that that uh, old area at uh, 1351, we tagged that. And once we went above 1350 the second time, it was a one-way Corrigan all the way up to 1362, and the market went back and forth. And it still has a bullish bias, but the key to the gold right now is it cannot go below 1349. If that gold goes below 1349, it means something's happening to the tuning fork. Somebody's grabbed it, and it's changing its vibration. And that's why you've got to keep a... Uh, I keep a close eye on it. So that's what I spend a lot of my time doing. I've been doing it for a long time. What I've always wanted to do was to be able to match up the price with the timing forecast by doing you know, computer simulating, but I've never been able to find anybody to do that kind of work. I've tried four or five people, and I'm just going to continue. Uh, I'll continue looking, but frankly, I don't think there's much. Uh, I mean, it works good for me because I can see it, and I don't have to explain it to anybody and believe me it, it, it loses too gosh turn sometimes it just it can't find a uh, just like like regular trading it can't even find a uh you know a pocket of uh, of in, in importance at all so that's the key thing to uh pay close attention to i did want to bring to your attention the the gold here because uh, this is a really important i know we're breaking out and it does look really good but we've made that 1.618 expansion there at 1361 the high today was a 1362 and change the reason why that 1349 is important because if we go black below that like i mentioned that's going to change the structure of what that pattern is supposed to be and that's that's what it's all about is to try to keep your keep your losses as small uh, as you possibly can, and then you know move on, you know to the next one. I don't usually follow the uh, the markets overnight, um, like I did last night. But I happen to be involved with a a trader uh, over in uh, uh, New South Wales, over in Australia, that was having a little bit of a difficulty, and I was trying to help him through a position, and uh, we were able to do that. But uh, doesn't always mean that that's going to happen. By the way, we do have Norman, the wizard, Winsky will be on. He calls it to the minute. He'll be on at 9.30. So 877-927-6648. The tab. The Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The TAS Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of TAS Market Profile, the TAS Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. 
Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien have just announced a special webinar on June 19th for all subscribers to the TAS Profile Scanner. Steve and Tom will break down the trade matrix, market breadth, heat grid, as well as the three-step process you can use with the TAS Profile Scanner to identify market movers and how to capitalize on that move. For all the details and to get started with the TAS Profile Scanner today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. With a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. Go sign up today. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, we're back, folks. Uh, we've backed off about 11 bucks, 12 bucks now in the gold. We get below 13.49. This is not going to be a good picture in gold. It's acting very, very uh, negative right now. It shouldn't have broken below 13.53, and uh, the reason why that is because it was uh, ten dollars down from its high, and it usually doesn't break more than that. So, it's very important that that gold stays above 13.49. And when you look at the divergence that we're having between silver and the uh, platinum, I mean, platinum, my goodness, it, it must have leprosy because nobody likes platinum. But uh, keep a close eye on it. Uh, someone's asked me a question over the uh, evening about uh, the fact about Julian Assange, Assange and stuff, folks. I have no idea uh, about any of that stuff. I really don't. They never check with me on those things, believe it or not. So I just move on to the next thing. Folks, those of you that trade the grains, I'm not going to bring this chart up because it's uh, something that I've uh, – uh, just thinking about, but it looks real interesting. I know the grain traders out there, uh, do yourself a favor and take a look at the uh, at the July wheat. Uh, look at it on a four-hour chart going over the past month. Uh, it is really important because it's making a 61% retracement from the high we made last year, believe it or not. And that comes in at $3, $5.40 a bushel. So look at it. But the key there, and I urge you to defy human weight nature and do the work yourself, as Jim Twentyman would say. Uh, you'll see the beautiful four ABCD patterns lining up at $5.40 a bushel. And guess what we have on Monday, folks? We have a full moon. And the moon and wheat sometimes go hand in hand. Sometimes they don't. But we'll see. Maybe uh, Mr. Winsky will give us a hint that maybe there's something big happening today or even tomorrow in the wheat, because if you have that, that would be an added factor, you know, to take a look at as you're as you're seeing this uh, unfold. Now, I do want to bring to your attention one other thing. My good friend Tom Hugard from over in uh, the UK, formerly of uh, Copenhagen. Uh, <laughs> there's an old joke about that. I will not go into that. Let's move up to the uh, this chart that Tom sent us. Uh, he does a little bit of a – hold on one second here. We'll get up here. Uh, get up here. We'll see here. There we go. Yeah, this is, uh, you know, the Dow Jones. He's just showing you uh, the candlesticks of, you know, what they're looking for and the swing of the points. You can 
see the ABCD patterns that are in here. And what, what Tom is doing is just showing the overall counting of the bars and filling of gaps and stuff is what he was going uh, to go in and how markets go into congestion. This is classical Wyckoff stuff, folks. Uh, stuff that Richard Wyckoff did back in the 30s and 40s, and uh, it was it's really great stuff. You should always look at it because he was a, he watched these swings very closely. False breakouts was his uh, one of his fortes and stuff, and we always watch those because of the the 1.27 and 1.618 expansions, you know, to see you know what uh, what is going on. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, <laughs> Okay, had a, a small thought here, but I was I was going to do something, but I decided to uh, change your mind. Let's talk just a tad here about Bitcoin, folks. I want to bring this up so you can take a look at it. There's been some talk, you know, about the bubble in Bitcoin. I want to get this up here, folks. Bubbles do not act like this. You, the bubble, if the if the market's going to go from July, when it was trading around 500 up to 19,000. It doesn't take a whole year for it to drop to 78.6%. It, it goes down just as fast as it went up. And this didn't go down. It went down very, very orderly. As you can see, now we've had the rally up. Now we're going sideways. This is, a, this is actually constructive, uh, const, you know, constructive behavior for, for Bitcoin. There's nothing wrong with this. It just looks, uh, it looks very, very interesting. So I, I don't trade it. I haven't traded it. I'm not going to trade it. Well, not now anyway, but, uh, you know, this is not a bubble type chart. It really isn't. Uh, you go back and look at the work of uh, uh, Charles Mackey, the popular delusions and the madness of crowds written in the 1800s or 1900s. And that basically you'll, you'll, you'll see some of the examples in there that they go straight up and, and straight down. A, a good example of a, a bubble, I believe is that uh, Telray stock. Um, I'm not sure exactly what it is. And someone's asked me about that that BYND, uh, and I don't know diddly squat about that. Hold on, I don't know if I even put that in there to take a look at it. It's called B, bring your own bread or something like that. Um, BY, no, I didn't put it in the BY. I didn't put it in there, but I, uh, I'll do it maybe next. I'll do it maybe Monday. I'm going to be doing a Basil show on Monday and Tuesday next week, so you're going to get me for uh, two hours next week. I'm going to do so, some different things to try to keep it interesting for me and keep it interesting for you, because I know a lot of you folks, you don't, uh, you don't, you get tired of looking at the patterns for sure. But I try to get you to do some of the work yourself, but. That's a tough. That's a tough deal to do. So we'll just uh, keep that in mind. Someone's asking me about this chart. B. I've had three requests now. B Y N D. Let me get it up here, and I'll just see if I can. B B Y N B Y N D. Was that, is that it? B Y N D. I hope that's the right thing. Is this the one with the, with the no meat, right? I hope that's the right one. Would someone tell me if I'm correct or not? Because I hate to waste any time out here. You know, doing it. Uh, yeah, yeah. This is it. Hold on, hold on a sec. I see it. <laughs> oh, it only went from 40 to 190. What's the big deal? Okay, let's just take a quick look at this. Give me a second to do the quick calculation. We always started there in late May. BYND Beyond Meat, Mr. Winsky has just informed me from the offices of. Uh, uh, hold on one second. Let me just get this up here. All righty, yeah, we made a 382 retracement here. So far, it's okay. Let's uh, let me get this up here to take a quick look at it. You know, I haven't don't you know anything? Uh, yeah, I mean, here, you're talking to somebody who eats meat three times a day, and they're going to get me to eat the synthetic meat. <laughs> I think not. Okay, here's the B Y N D Beyond Meat. It came out, it rallied up, it made a 61% retracement over a four-day retracement down there. At uh, 50, around 60 bucks, uh, the actual low was uh, uh, $61, and then from from that it went all the way up to 190, where they were nice enough to let a few folks in, and it it immediately went from 190 down to 128. The the 38 percent retracement on that came in at 130, so it uh, bounced above it. It stayed above the 38 percent retracement and above the gap of that of that big breakout. Now, if we start going down into that gap, which is below 120, <laughs> this thing's going to go all the way back to 70 because it's not, that's not a, uh, I don't know nothing about the volume or nothing, but that's, 
I, I don't trade this stuff, but I, I, I don't. That's all I can see. All I know is it made a 382 retracement. It's still bullish. As long as it stays above 130, it's okay. Below 130, you can you can you can look at 75, because uh, that's how quickly it will go. That would be a bubble. You know that that would be uh, that type. Just like that Til Tel Ray or Dill Ray or whatever it is, one of those cannabis stocks. You know, did pretty much. Uh, pretty much the same thing. So, Pete, you know, keep keep an eye on that. But, boy, my goodness, the break's coming up here. We've got the wizard coming up here next, folks, directly out of Naples, Florida. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, with a great deal of anticipation, I would like to introduce a new speaker here, Norm Winsky out of Naples, Florida, Astro Trends. Norm, how are you, my friend? Great. Thanks for Thanks for having me on your show, Larry. Is this the first time you've been on? No, you're pulling our leg, Larry. Yes, I am, just a little bit. And the reason why is we... I lost you, Larry. Can't hear you now, Larry. Uh-oh. We got trouble. Uh, 
Oh, brother. Uh, oh, I can hear you now, Larry. Can you hear me? Okay, yeah. I'm sorry. I don't know what happened. Maybe it was the Internet. You know how these uh, – it's ever since Julian Assange is being extradited. You know, you got to be really careful what you say on the air, Norm. Uh -huh. Hey, Norm, do you know anything about the possibility of a war third or fourth week of June like Arch is talking about? Uh, looks more – if we're going to have some military conflict, looks more likely this weekend. This weekend, okay. Yeah, Hopefully, well, don't wait. call my. You know, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> maybe maybe they'll call my Navy SEAL team up. I made a joke about that once at a poker table, and there happened to be a Navy SEAL playing cards, and he didn't he didn't appreciate it. So I shouldn't I shouldn't joke about that stuff because those guys are those are real heroes. Go ahead, my friend. I'm sorry to take your time. Go ahead. Tell us what you got. Hey, just uh, just a couple of quick reminders for folks. I know you got a lot of people that are trading the stock, and I think they're trading the stock index futures like S&P, and today is rollover day. Make sure you go to the September contract now, right? Mm -hmm. And if you're an American okay. citizen, you might want to put your flag out for Flag Day today. There you go. Today, hey, I didn't know it was Flag Day today. That's good. Thank you, Norm. I yes, knew sir. you'd give us some. I knew you'd give us something good after all these years. It finally <laughs> happened. <laughs> I, I get lucky every now and then, Larry. Go ahead, pal. All right, I was on last on your show on May 28th, and so I thought that we'd go back and ch take a look at what happened back that week and see how it all worked out. So I got uh, I got a couple of events. We had the AC. If you see AC on my notes, that means after the close, it's something that happened overnight. So you're probably going to have your most likely your biggest effect the next day. We had May 29th AC after the close. Uh, we I do a I track. The what's called the U.S. natal chart. That's we take a snapshot of where the planets were on July the 4th, 1776. If the planets line up with those planets, that's an important harmonic point. Every time that happens, we'll be looking at U.S. stocks, T-bonds, and U.S. dollar. Uh, we also had Saturn lining up with Pluto uh, that, that same window. So we'll be looking at the 30th for your cocoa, coffee, hog stocks, and T-bonds. And as you know, Larry, early Monday morning, the 31st, which is over that uh, 31 weekend, we had a new moon in Gemini, and we round up the usual suspects for our new moons and full moons, financial screens, and precious metals. And the stock market is the big basket of everything, so if anything important is happening, that could affect the stock market. And oh yeah, and then the next day on Tuesday, the 4th in the morning, we had from the point of view of the sun, we had Mars enter the sign Leo, and Leo is associated with corn, gold, and OJ. And you know those Duke brothers, they love that OJ, right, Larry? <laughs> That's correct. Okay, well, so we might, uh, I know nobody trades the OJ, but we might have to concentrate on that. Just a little bit, right? Oh, you have to concentrate on the orange juice. Okay, I think go. I've got That's it a, now. <laughs> That's a little little juice humor there, Larry. Uh, uh, All right, we had my two points of our for subscribers. The well, I had my two points for the 30th. There's a little bounce high there in the S&P. And then we went down to the new moon. So it's all all green on those. We had two uh, greens there, you know, the potential to make money for the 30th by selling there on that bounce. And then we went down and into a low, amazing reversal there on June Monday, June 3rd. With the new moon, and then we and we had a huge rally, as you know, into about the 10th, 11th, and uh, we had Mars go into Leo. We had to take a look at that, uh, but that didn't work. The stock market didn't care about that, so it went right through that. Here's your T bonds. Oh, it's your favorite market, I think, Clary. <laughs> yep. Okay. We. What's that? It is. There along you go. You're in the bond. Along with right, 26 others, with. Yeah, I'm in bondage. You got it. <laughs> there you go. So we had a little kind of a mixed picture here. I had two signals for the 30th. I'm going to give it a 50-50 there. It didn't work great. It kind of worked marginally. You know, you had a little pullback low there. It was very marginal. So I'll give it a 50-50. I gave it a green and a red arrow. Hardly ever do that. And so there we go. And then we went up, though, and one day from the new moon, we made a top, and we were very close to the top on the new moon day there on the third. So I'm going to take that as a winner, you know. All right, okay. then we're moving on to the dollar. Here's the dollar. We had our 30th date there for a change in trend for your stocks, T-bonds, and U.S. dollar. And that pretty much nailed the high on the dollar. Then the dollar came down, and usually the currencies dance to the moon, 
but the dollar didn't care about the moon on June 3rd, and so that was not effective, so we went 50-50 on the dollar. Here's your cocoa. We had the 30th as a possible day for the cocoa, and the day before was a high. It made a double top there the two previous days, and we were close to the top there. I think we missed it by maybe 15 points or so, 15, 20 points, and then we dropped about 130 points. So that's not too bad if you gave up 15 points and you make, uh, you know, for $150 or so and you make like 1300 that's not too bad, you know. The coffee was not effective. It went right through my point there and didn't top until several days later. So now we're moving ahead now to hogs. Let's look at the hogs. The hogs worked okay. We had a bounce high right near the uh, my date there, the 30th. I think the actual high was a few points, a few fractions higher uh, the day before. And then the hogs have been going down, down, down since that point. We're still looking for a trough there in the hogs, right, Larry? <laughs> A little hog yes, humor sir. there, Larry. Yeah, yeah, I got it. I got it. All Mr. right, uh, I'm working. I'm working on my stand-up routine. You know, right there. Yeah, well, keep 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 working. You got a little bit of you got a little bit of improvement. So don't worry about okay. it. Okay. Okay, I'll keep the day job, right? All right, mm -hmm. here you here, here's the euro. There, it was about a day off. The low came. Well, the low came on the 30th. It was very marginal there. 30th, 31st was really the low. And on the new moon there, you were still kind of within the range of the bottom there. And then that's where it took off on the uh, new moon. Here's your British pound was a little even a little more friendly than the euro. And that the low was definitely on the 31st. And you're almost, you're, you know, pretty much still in part, uh, part of that range there on the new moon day on the 3rd. And then we went up a little bit. That was not a little better timing on that one, but the potential there didn't turn out as good because you didn't go very far. And then here's your yen. The yen historically has been the best currency uh, for dancing to the moon. I don't know why, but it is. And you can see that right on the new moon there was, well, it might have gone a fraction higher, a few pips higher the next day, but that was about it. And then that was pretty close to the top there on the end. And then you had a nice uh, short-term correction for the following week. Okay, Here's we gotta your corn. Bills oh, we gotta, commercial music time. Music time. Yeah, okay. yeah, we got to pay some bills. 877-927-6648. Yes, Stay tuned for Norm Winsky of Astro Trend. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. 
Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour, next on TFNN. Okay, we're back with Norm Winsky of Astro Trends. Yes, sir, Norm, Larry. Are you there? Go ahead, keep up. Okay, buddy. so let's talk about corn. Uh, we had two dates for the corn, uh, the uh, new moon date, of course, for their grains. And then because corn is also associated with Leo and Mars went into from heliocentric, that's from the point of view of the sun, went into Leo. We'll be looking at the third and the fourth. And the third was the new moon. And either side of the, either day of that, we'll be looking for a change in trend. And we got that. And then the fourth kind of nailed the top there. As you can see with my, if you see, got my chart up there uh, with the two green arrows there, that was not too bad. And I had a nice pull back there in the corn. So let's go now. I'm going to sh share something with you I learned many years ago. You know, I was uh, mostly hang, hung out there. I started out at the CBOE right out of college. I, we were in the Board of Trade building. I ended up meeting a lot of the Board of Trade people, green traders. And I met some legendary traders, so maybe I'll, we'll talk about that someday. And so I was told by some of these people that, believe it or not, I know oats are very thin. Nobody trades oats. A couple of horses in Colorado are trading the oats, so that's about it, you know. And so, uh, but he said, you ought to look at the oats anyway, because the oats tend to be a leading factor, a leading indicator for the other grains. And sure enough, let's go look at the oat chart. Here's your December oats. And they made their low in early May, whereas most of the other grains made their low about a week later. So there you go, nothing, nothing like having a little heads up there uh, in advance, you know. Mm -hmm. So there we go, let's look at the oats. The oats made their top right on the new moon. They respond nicely to the moon. And there's your beans. Uh, they made a top close to the next day was kind of the top on the beans, but just a few pennies higher. Uh, I don't, they probably wouldn't even gotten, the, you know, probably not stopped out, even sold it on the new moon day. And now we're gonna move ahead and look at wheat. And wheat was right on the new moon there on the third. Folks, if you're not looking at these cycles, you're trading at a big disadvantage, in my opinion. All right, let's go look at the other Leo markets now. You got your OJ, which is, uh, look at that, right on the fourth was the top on the OJ. And nobody's trading it, except for the Duke brothers, you know. And there's your gold, and the gold was one day later on the 5th. That was a little top there on the 5th. We've since taken that out. So longer term, I think that's bullish, but with the full moon coming on Monday, near term, we could be nearing a uh, short-term top here in the gold. So you maybe, you, I think you were talking earlier, Larry, about the fake, uh, was that you were talking about uh, breakouts and that kind of thing, fake, fake outs and breakouts and that sort of thing, I think. And so you maybe you're getting a little uh, fake out, breakout there for the short term mm -hmm. on the gold. All right, so here's what's coming up, Larry. Here's a real gaze into our crystal ball here now. See what's coming up. We got a huge weekend right now, this weekend. And we have the, uh, yep, we have Jupiter's going to line up with the Moon's North Node in Cancer. So that's your, watch your oats, silver, and stocks. And we have uh, Jupiter uh, to Neptune. And we're going to be watching, in particular, oil and stocks. There's a theme coming here. Here you go. Here's about a possible war, military con uh, confrontation. Uh, we have something with the U.S. natal chart. Pluto to the U.S. Mars uh, could be something there over this weekend. And then we have the uh, Moon's North Node uh, making 120 degrees Nept to Neptune and Pisces. Again, oil is popping up. 
That's a strong team here for this uh, coming up the next uh, over this weekend and in about a week from now too. We'll get to that in a minute. Then we'll also Monday, early Monday morning before the market opens, we have a full moon in Sagittarius. That'll be your oats and your usual suspects: financials, grains, gold, OJ, silver, and stocks. And then uh, after the close, after the overnight, after the 20th, over that night, we have again Jupiter to the U.S. Neptune. Stocks, T-bonds, U.S. dollar, and U.S. oil. And then on the, this is my top, one of my top things. Neptune turns retrograde. This is due to the relative motion of the Earth to the other planets. In this case, Neptune will be turning retrograde, and that's oil. Again, we seem to have a theme here with oil. And then uh, on the, sum, uh, uh, the night of the solstice, that will be the 21st, we have Pluto to the U.S. Neptune again. Again, that's your stocks, T-bonds, U.S. dollar, and oil. And then over that weekend, we also have the Moon's North Node in Cancer, going to be uh, 180 to, Cap to Saturn and Capricorn. Uh, that's coffee, silver, and stocks. And then we have a Mercury point coming up uh, right that weekend, too, the 21st weekend for the grains, corn, oats, soybeans, socks, and wheat. And then my other top thing, uh, ret retrograde direct and also Mercury uh, when planets get to zero latitude, and that's going to happen the night of the 26th. So that'll be your Mercury is green, so corn, oats, soybeans, stocks, and wheat. So there's your future. Uh, you might want to chop those down or get a hold of me, and we'll go over those and tell you why corn, OJ, and gold seem to be somehow related, you know? Mm -hmm. to tell you the secrets, you know? <laughs> okay. All right, here's the two charts that I haven't covered yet are silver. And the silver, like the gold, is near the top of its recent trading range. So that's setting up, I think, for a possible short-term high here on Monday. And the crude, uh, we're not even... Uh, the crude, the big deal on the crude is going to be about a week away, and uh, it's kind of in the middle of its range here, but we could get a little bit of it. I think there was something there for the over the weekend here for the oil, so if it gets to the extreme, that's what we look for. Look for these markets to get to the top of their channel, bottom of their channel at one of these key points, and then we look for a reversal, which happens a pretty fair amount of time, about the, my batting average is over 70% on these uh, signals, so it uh, works pretty well. And let's see, what else we have? Oh, we got the free stuff, how close are we to the next break there, Larry, we getting close? Yeah, go right, you got two minutes, go ahead, get your commercial in. Well, there you go. Here's, uh, you can get a hold of me right away and get in line for the free classes I have. I got a deluxe class where I'll go into the swing trading and why these, and teach you some astro, some advanced Fibonacci, fractals, uh, GAN, all kinds of things, and or you can do if you uh, want. I also do day trading. I can teach my day trading class in about 30 minutes, and I have people that I trained last week, and they were making money the next day. So you know, I forecast mm -hmm. turns in the market to the minute. And Larry's right; it's to the minute. Winsky here, <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, that's what we do. It, it works out pretty well. And so contact me. Here's my contact information here. I, By the way, I got over 50 years, not as much as Larry, but I got about 50 years of experience. Started studying the markets when I was a teenager, and uh, now I'm 68. And I was on the uh, Chicago exchanges there, SIBO, and the Board of Trade for 12 years. So I got a little bit of experience. So contact me right away so you can get in the queue for the uh, free classes. And Norm, looking forward to helping I'm, some of your folks. Uh, and if you're American dad, I uh, have a great dad dad's day there on Sunday. Norm, uh, uh, on let's say on Monday, uh, I'm going to be doing a show for Basil Chapman. Would you like to join us on that show? Because we're going to have some key times that, that day with the new moon or with the full moon. Maybe you can, there'll be some different listeners, of course. So uh, I'll, I'll alert you to the time. You got about 15 minutes on Monday? Okay, I'll do that. What time of day will that be? I'm not sure. I think it's at. Uh, I'm not even sure because uh, well, I. You can, you can get yeah, me, get yeah. me after the show here and give me the details, right? Yes, I could certainly do that. But thanks for joining us today, and we'll see you Monday. And uh, we got that full moon, and there's going to be a lot of activity. I think this coming week, uh, for a lot of different reasons, we got that summer solstice, which is always important. So, Norm, thank you very much, my friend. Appreciate you coming on. Thank you very much, Larry. Thanks for having me on, and everybody have a great day and a great weekend.
I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave Sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, I wanted to uh, bring to your attention uh, one of the markets that we follow because we have a lot of friends down under in Australia, and I wanted to bring this uh, chart up of the Australian dollar. We rallied up to 70 uh, last week, we pointed that out because it was a 382 retracement of the move that we made, you know, way back in April. You'll notice each of those swings were almost perfect, and we've come down so hard this week. We're trading around 68.84. You know, anything below 68.57 sets up a price to take out those old lows down there uh, at 6600. Now, the head and shoulders pattern that we we talked about this a long time ago is once we broke below that right side of that head and shoulders, that was down around 70, 69.60, that violated the head and shoulders pattern. It should never come back and touch that line, uh, which it did. So now this is set up for an ABCD structure, taking you down to possibly a double bottom at least at the 67.20. Folks, if you think we have res re regulations here in the United States, you should go over and visit someone over in Australia because they are the masters of regulation. They have regulations on regulations on regulations. I mean, they have regulations on broadband, uh, when you can use it, how you can use it, if you can use it. Uh, anyway, just uh, just be careful because a lot of things that you hope will happen might not, so be very careful. Anyway, folks, uh, this is going to be a very, very and, and last minute here, but watch the stock market uh, today very closely because if we close really strong, I'm not sure we will, but if we do, that will be a positive sign. And on the flip side of that, 
If we close weak, and I mean below 28.75 in the S&P 500, that's going to be a very, very negative sign. And uh, that would be telling us that we're most probably going to be coming down into this uh, full moon that we have on Monday. Like I mentioned earlier, I will be doing the show for Basel on Monday and Tuesday. I'll have some guests on that the folks at uh, Chapman's group doesn't get to hear very often. We'll have uh, we'll have Norm on. We'll probably have uh, Arch Crawford on again and maybe even Stan Harley. So live every day in an attitude of gratitude and may God bless. 